It's rare to hit a one-play touchdown against this type of coverage with a tight end, but for whatever reason, based on the fact that the running back is on a streak underneath this route, you can see how the safety can't right quite react to it, and it allows the tight end to get across his face for another easy one-play touchdown. But there's nothing here but space. The cornerback underneath is nowhere to be found, and it's just a sprint to the end zone to get another one-play touchdown. As you can see right here, this receiver just gets completely forgotten by all the defenders in coverage and gets wide open for one-play touchdown by about 20 yards. Need more help or just want to show your support? Support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip with the man. She's as always got another full breakdown video for you guys today with a brand new offense out of a brand new playbook in the Buffalo Bills. If you guys follow this you know channel for more than a year i've been going back through buffalo's bill content for a couple seasons now and i haven't really touched on it this year but it is one of my favorite playbooks so i do plan on putting out a full breakdown of this offense pretty soon uh, i do have some content already but i really want to flush this out because the buffalo bills is one of the most unique playbooks in the game but before i do if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more please make sure to be a subscriber hit like button let me know in the comment section and if you want more help you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment now the formation I'm going to be focusing on today is the Gun Trips TE. This is a very uh, unique formation. It has a very unique uh, setup. It has very unique route structures and concepts. Uh, as far as my substitutions though, I just want to make sure that my best or my fast receiver is going to be in this spot here. My second best or second fastest I probably want to have in this spot here as these are really the two main routes on this uh, formation or on this scheme. Now this formation has a lot of really good running concepts, more than most shotgun formations, so I'm going to start with that. I'm not even really sure what the best one is, but I'm going to start off with just a simple inside zone. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the inside zone, but it's a very uh, consistent run play. You can see how that receiver comes downhill and sets the block on the linebacker. That's really what makes this play good. If it's a man coverage or something like that, a lot of times it'll be spread, and you can see here now it's not going to be as good because there's a man defender there, so he's not going to be able to get to that next level necessarily and get that block which you can see the guard does so the inside zone is just a very consistent run play from this formation you can see you get a lot of different blocking concepts this is what i was talking about here where you can see how it's a man coverage so now there's nobody even in that gap which will make this run even easier although he did kind of step into that gap but still you can see how this is a very successful run play against man coverage zone coverage whether it looks like there's a gap there or not you just got to make sure that at the very least you have some space uh to get you know that first initial couple yards but it can be worth more it can be an explosive run play but nobody likes inside zones and where everybody's running rpo so let's go and let's pick the rpo zone alert bubble which is perfect because once again i have stefan Diggs in the action spot so let's go and let's pick that now when it comes to this play the best way to stop rpos is man coverages and since we have three receivers on one side of the field it really gives away the coverage early i mean you can't do stuff like um, you know, you can't hide a man coverage against this look. You really can't. You know, this will force your opponent to show their hand quite a bit. So now that I know that uh, Ramsey's just right in front of that guy, I'm not, I already got a pre-snap read. I know that I got to hand the ball off or switch plays because I don't think necessarily I would run this play against a man coverage look like I'm getting. But you can see, once again, we have a gap here, so I can't always just take that gap and treat this like an inside run play. So this is my one of my four-play audibles. I always have that option. But the real reason I would call this place is I want to throw to the screen, the, the bubble screen. So here on a play like this where I can see that I have a numbers advantage, I don't have a defender in front of him, this gives away the formation to the point where I know it's a zone, and I can basically just swing it out. And if I get a little bit of a catch and run better than that, I can probably get a better play. But this is going to be very helpful against zone more than man is my point. As you can see right here, every time I have a man look, I have to hand it off. If there's a defender right in front of that guy, I got to hand it off. But at least I can make that pre-snap read very easily. On this play here, same thing. There's nobody in front of him. So I know that I have a zone and I have a numbers advantage. I just got to get outside of that. And you can see I can have a very big play, uh, which is one of the benefits of running like a trip set like this is it'll give away the defense every single time and against a lot of different defenses. Now, those are two run plays in the same direction, but we actually have a counter run play going in the opposite direction, which is very nice. This is a good run play for people that try to shift to take away the RPO alert. Um, but this is something that the computer won't necessarily do. So for me, it's just best to run, uh, you know, if you have, a, you have a run play to go in the opposite direction, which a lot of offenses don't necessarily have. And this particular offensive formation has two. Now, if you're facing a blitzing or aggressive defense like this, since we got a pull and block, you don't want to do that. As you'll see, these safeties will most likely blow that up because anytime you have an aggressive blitzing defense against a pull and blocking structure, it's not going to work out. So keep that in mind. But at the end of the day, if you have some nice vanilla zone coverages, you can have a good run play 
play in the opposite direction, which is really just the value of this play. Now, you also have a read option, but a lot of people set their read option defense. It's worth trying, though. So let's go and let's pick that. Typically, in a read option play, just watch the read defender. If the read defender is aggressive like he is here, you keep with the quarterback, and you'll see how you, have, once again, have another run play to attack the opposite field, while you can also attack the, um, you know, you basically just hold A and just treat it like a normal inside run, and it's also very successful. So once again, this is another play that you could have in your audibles. Now, there is a fifth play that I consider to be kind of like a run play, and that's the halfback slip screen. So let's go and pick that. The slip screen here, I mean, I don't typically like running plays that only have one option, but you do have a second option with this out route. So that's a route that can beat man, it can beat zone, it can be a good secondary option if this running back doesn't necessarily get a clean release or whatever. But at the end of the day, if I'm going to call this play, it's pretty much always going to be to throw to the screen. But like I said, you do have a secondary option. I don't like to run a play like this unless I have a secondary option, and I do have that. It's going to be best against blitzing defenses like this too, as you can see right there. I didn't even get the ball off. But whenever you got the entire defense coming up field, like this here, looks like another man zero blitz. This is the perfect opportunity to call screen. So if somebody's running too many of these, you can hit them with uh, with some screens, and it would definitely uh, catch them off guard and uh, definitely you know result in a lot of big games because all their defenders are going after the quarterback. I'm gonna go over a couple unique dink and dunk plays when it comes to man coverage, starting with the PA counter go. As this play here is very good against pretty much any man, but let's go and let's pick cover one hole. Pretty much every route here except for the street gets open. And I could kick this play up a notch by putting the running back on a wheel, but I'm going to leave it alone. As you can see, the tight end's a very good route. The uh, the slot receiver on the other side is also a very good route. This is why I'm running it from the, the center of the field here. As you can see, that route's going to get open against man. Um, they also get open against man zero the same way, although obviously it's going to be a little bit more pressure. Uh, the B receiver is a good one, but I don't know if he's going to get open against Ramsey. As you can see, I mean, he really just, you know, Ramsey's going to jump that. But most of the time, that's a very good route that can get open as well. And if I really want to kick it up and out, I can just put the running back on a wheel. If I'm doing that, I don't want the B receiver running the way that it is because the, the, the wheel route's going to be my, my deep receiver over here. As you can see, we can get that open. And I, I mentioned that in the last play as well. As wheel routes are just very good against man coverage in general. So that's one good man beating play. You have another in the curl flat we'll go ahead and pick that we'll continue this time we'll go uh, cover and hole again it's another play where you have multiple good man beating options but the running back is really the star of this play is anytime you have that texas route it's a really good option but to me the best thing about this play is what the texas route does against cover three so let's go and let's pick that pick cover three sky on the other side like i said one of the things i like about this play is all the different things you can do against uh cover three because that's one of the harder defenses to score against and if i motion out this running back here and then put everybody on streaks except for that running back you're going to notice how that running back holds that cornerback down long enough that i get a very good pass lead up the seam here that's a potential one play touchdown the tight end might score but it's really what this particular route does to make this cornerback hesitate underneath as you can see chops his feet not knowing if that's supposed to be his coverage assignment and that just lets this tight end get open right up the seam for another easy catch and run one play touchdown as long as you have a fast enough tight end i'm going to do that one more time just to show you how consistent it is i put the a tight end on the street but i put the other guys on fades and as long as you get a clean enough release you can see how this is a very explosive play just as long as you don't get that stupid catch animation that i got there but i still scored so that's pretty much it for the dink and dunk plays. we got a few more one-play touchdowns I want to show you guys, starting with one of the best in the game, and that's the deep end. So let's go and let's pick that. We're going to continue. We'll start off with Tampa 2. It's going to be a one-play touchdown in a couple different ways. The best way to me, though, is just put the wide receiver on a fade, and you'll see how that'll pull the safety apart to the point where I could just basically just throw this right through the middle because the corner route that the tight end is on also pulls the other safety part as well. Play can have a lot of success against cover two man as well. We're going to pick that. Going to be pretty much the same setup. Just run it from a hash, put the Y receiver on a fade. And it really just depends on, you know, which superstar player here wins the battle. As you can see, we get another easy one play touchdown right up the middle. Next up, we'll choose cover one hole. Against this, I'm just going to fade the B and the X receiver there. Just make sure that I run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And you can see how you can get an opportunity for a catch and one play touchdown, although it's probably not the best. This play can also be man coverages like cover zero. Against cover zero, I think I just want to put the uh, receiver on a smart route just to shorten that. Against cover zero, just check and release the running back, maybe slide my protection a little bit just so I could pick up this, uh, this look because this can beat that coverage. You just have to uh, get enough time in the pocket, which is not always easy. So if that's the case, just check and release the running back, check and release the tight end. Just give yourself, you know, you can even motion block 
uh, you know, one of these receivers if you know you're going to try to take that shot. Although he will turn into a mid, mid tier coverage. And then you can see how, you know, I have plenty of pass pro for a very easy catch and one will play touchdown. So that's pretty much it for that. But we do have some good dink and dunk pass plays, starting with the shallow X dig, which is also one play touchdown against a lot of different things. But let's start off by showing that against random on defense one more time. Now, this is one of the better dink and dunk concepts. And I find the best way to run it is to motion this guy across and put him on a streak. Then put the wide receiver on a drag so that you have double drags. And last but not least, I put the running back on a curl just so I have something over the middle if the user uh, vacates. He falls too far across. And you can see how this guy here is going to get open against a lot of different zone coverages because the, uh, the streak pulls back any deep zones. You have the double drags, which is obviously going to get open against most things. You don't really have to, um, you know, you could do any number of things with this particular play. Like you could streak the tight end and you could, um, which I'll show you in a second here. But like I said, there's a lot of different different options as you can see once again that b receiver is going to get open every single time if you wait i probably could hit one of the drags but i'm going for the bigger play but you could also put the running back on a out left and then streak the tight end and put the wide receiver on a drag and you have a similar double drags concept but one of these guys should get open every single time as you can see once again i'm typically looking for that deep crosser because that's going to be the best one but you don't have to make that motion because if you make that motion too much it could be a bit of a tell so i like to just sometimes um, just do it like this and this will also give you the added benefit of the X receiver which is another good route you can see right here he comes open uh, inside you know splitting the zones so there's a lot you know to me the second step is probably the better of the two but this play has a lot of one play touchdown capability too so let's go and let's pick that one more time we're going to start off with Tampa 2 against cover 2 running from a hash mark to the open side of the field like I am here put the A receiver on a 10 yard out route and then put the A or I'm sorry the B and the X receiver on streaks now, the B receiver has an opportunity to get open here. As you can see, they can just split the safeties. And, um, you know, that's partially because there's so many receivers on the other side pulling that safety apart. But you could also try to hit the X receiver. Like I said, phase might be a little bit better if you're going to try to hit the X receivers. You can go around the coverage. And you can see how there's just, you know, nothing out here once he gets past the initial jam from Howard. And this really has more to do with what this receiver is doing because when he crosses, this this uh, you know safety kind of has to follow. But the safety can't really cover either one of these guys. Both of these receivers, this inside receiver here is going to be gone. And if I throw the outside receiver to the sideline, it's going to be the same thing as he's gone as well. Both these receivers are gone for an easy one play touchdown. Now this play can also have success against cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that next. Against cover two man, it's not going to be one play touchdown necessarily, but you can put the A route on a streak. And you can motion across either one of these inside receivers, either this one or uh, Gabriel Davis. And you can see how, you know, it takes away the strength of cover two man because they want to press. They want to jam. They want to get their hands on the receiver. And they can't really do that if you motion snap like this. So you can use that route or you can use this route, run to the open side of the field so you have more catch and run space. But the second they get past, you can basically just, you know, load up and there's going to be space outside here every single time. So it's a very easy play. Whichever one you don't use you can use over the middle of the field too because they'll get open regardless. So if I want to motion this guy across and try to work that, if that doesn't work out, the Y receiver is going to be there. If I motion the Y receiver out, the other one's going to be open over the middle. You know what I mean? So it's like you have two routes, one of the outside and one of the inside every single time. This play can also have success against things like cover one hole. So let's go and let's pick that. Against cover one, I find the best way to do it is run from a hash mark like I am here and put the B receiver on a fade. So we'll basically set a pick for the Y receiver a lot of times based off the fact that this formation is so condensed now because it's close to the hash mark. And you can see you get a very easy one play touchdown once he crosses the safety's face. And this is due to the formation being condensed on the hash mark based off the fact that this receiver here runs a streak or a fade. He's going to basically force the defensive back that's covering him to get into the way of the other defensive back who's trying to get across to get to this receiver. So basically, once he gets this much separation, I know that he's gone because that safety has to cover that streak. He has to cover the deeper option, allowing this receiver to get wide open over the middle of the field for an easy one play touchdown. But both of these routes really can beat man cover one. So if you want to try to throw to the B receiver, just run it from the other hash marks so they're not so close together. And put the A receiver on a streak now. And you'll notice that the B receiver is just a good route. It's not necessarily going to be a one-play touchdown, especially when he's being covered by Jalen Ramsey. But it's still a very good play against man coverages. If you want to, you can also put the running back on a streak so that you have that dragging tight end, which is also going to be a good play. But there's multiple options here against pretty much any man coverage. 
This play also going to have a lot of success against zone coverages like cover three. So let's go and let's pick that. There's a lot of different ways to beat cover three in this formation, but this is one of the better ways to do that. If you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, motion this guy across and put him on a comeback route, he will hold the cornerback down. I'll then put the B receiver on a fade, and he'll hold the safety and the cornerback in position to the point where I can throw to the Y receiver once he crosses the field. But I'm going to block the running back too. Go ahead and I'll slide my protection. i got to check down in the drag if I want it. But I'm really just waiting for this one play touchdown. As the second he crosses that safety, I can bullet and pass it for a very easy score. And this route's going to be the MVP of this formation. As you can see right here once again, he just crosses at such a dramatic angle that about 20 to 25 yards down the field, I'm already throwing the ball. The ball's already out of my hand. So it's going to be really hard to get a sack in this distance of time. As you can see, I'm already loading up 20 yards down the field for a very easy catch and one play touchdown against this zone coverage. This play can also have a lot of success against things like cover four. So let's go and let's pick cover four quarters. Against cover four, you just have to put the B receiver on a fade and the X receiver on a slant. And this does something as the B receiver just gets wide open and forgotten uh, for probably one of the easiest one play touchdowns you're going to get. Cover 4 is a very good run defense, but against certain pass plays, if you know how to glitch it out, it's very simple. As you can see right here, this receiver just gets completely forgotten by all the defenders in coverage and gets wide open for one play touchdown by about 20 yards. And then last but not least, this play can have a lot of success against Cover 4 regular, so it's going to pick Cover 4 drop. Against Cover 4, I'm going to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field one more time. Put the B or the A tight end on a streak and the B receiver on a fade. Then I'm going to motion this guy across and put him on a comeback. And that's all I really got to do. I'll go ahead. I mean, I can keep my, my running back in a check and release. So I can just block him because this is a practice mode. I know I'm going for the one play touchdown. But the check and release is helpful as a check down. And you can see how this receiver here just gets wide open underneath that streak. While the cornerback is too busy covering the comeback route. There isn't much of a pass rush. So it's really not too difficult to wait for this guy to cross. But basically at this point, I can throw. At, at any point in time, I'm probably already winding up. As you can see, I'm kind of stepping into it. But there's nothing here but space is the cornerback underneath is nowhere to be found and it's just a sprint to the end zone to get another one play touchdown now that play was a one play touchdown against every single defense in the game except for cover zero so let's go and let's pick a play that also beats cover zero in the bills wide post we'll start off with the overstorm brave you got a couple different options here you got the uh, the b receiver one more time i'll go ahead and I'll motion this guy across give myself like a slant or something if i want any number of check downs i'll check and release the running back but there's a lot of good options here as the B receiver is going to get open outside just as long as uh, Jalen Ramsey doesn't do nothing crazy. As you can see, we get a very easy catch and roll play touchdown there. And that was against a lit up Jalen Ramsey. As you can see, he just gets outside. It's just the route. It just beats this type of coverage as we get another very easy one play touchdown. But you also got the tight end. So if I check and release the running back just for a little bit of extra blocking, you'll see how the guy in coverage will stay down. And you'll have an opportunity to this tight end, even though Dawson Knox isn't necessarily the best receiving threat. It still can be a very big play. This play works better the longer you hold it, but you'll notice that once he cuts across this defensive back's face, that it's really an easy play just as long as you bullet and pass it inside for another one play touchdown to another receiver. Now, this play also can have a lot of success against regular coverages like cover two. So let's go and let's pick Tampa two. Against cover two, there's a couple different things you could do. You can motion this guy across and attack either the B route or the A route just by putting this guy on a streak. And I'm gonna block the running back, although that's a good check down, so you don't have to do that. But if I put the Y receiver on a streak, the B receiver will get open outside against a lot of different defenses. As you can see right here, it's not necessarily one big touchdown, but it's gonna be a big play. We keep motion across this guy here because I'm gonna use that motion a lot. I'm gonna do that one more time, but I'm gonna to try to work the A receiver as well as this route here. We'll cut outside and then cut back inside the safeties. But it isn't necessarily a catch and run one more time. As you can see, it's just a big play. Play can also have a lot of surprising success against things like cover two man. Cover two man is pretty much going to be the same thing. Just motion this guy across. You can streak the wire out. The B receiver should do a pretty good job of getting outside, although he's lit up now and he's beating the jam. So, you know, it's really hard to say, but it's it's a good option against pretty much any man coverage, as we showed earlier. I find one of the better ways to beat cover two, though, would be just to put the running back on a wheel route, as the A route does a good job, and the, the running back on a wheel route just does a good job of getting outside of that. Especially if you run into the hash mark like I did. As you can see, it gets open underneath. And this is because wheel routes really do a good job against any man coverage. As you can see, when he turns upfield, he just gets wide open 
on the linebacker. And the uh, the safety kind of has to play inside because of that route that the tight end is running. He has to stay inside on that, which is a good pull route for another easy catch and run one play touchdown. This play is very unique when it comes to things like cover three and cover four, though. This has a unique cover three one play touchdown concept if you just put the running back on a streak and run from a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here. The streaking running back will pull the, uh, the safety over late, allowing the tight end to get open once he crosses the safety's face for a very unique one-play touchdown. It's rare to hit a one-play touchdown against this type of coverage with a tight end, but for whatever reason, based on the fact that the running back is on a streak underneath this route, you can see how the safety can't re quite react to it, and it allows the tight end to get across his face for another easy one-play touchdown. So there are two more plays of interest in the verticals and the PA boot shot, but a lot of the setups are pretty much the same that I already showed you out of the shallow X dig. So I'm not going to waste you guys' time with that. But if you want to see more breakdowns from the bills next week as I try to work on this ebook, please make sure to be a subscriber, like button, and let me know in the comment section. And I'll make sure to put out another video next week on Friday or Saturday like I typically do. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My